On this episode of Food News and Shoes, Chef Jeremy and Sylvia get a sneak peek at the Kentucky Proud Incredible Food Show from MC Chef Bridget Nguyen. Then Chef Jeremy and Chef Bridget make Kentucky Proud nachos with homemade chorizo. That's what's coming up on Food News and Chews. Food News and Chews is brought to you by these proud sponsors. Alltech, helping farmers feed the world. Azure Restaurant and Patio, worldly influenced, locally inspired. Sullivan University, offering higher education for people with higher goals. Azure Catering, catering the most important events, yours. Critchfield Meats, fresh, high quality, all natural meats, guaranteed. Okay, Jeremy. All right. <laughs> All right. The school so teacher like has a, arrived. The school teacher. Okay. I got okay. You. Now you just listen for a minute. Mm -hmm. You've been <laughs> ignoring. <laughs> you have been. There's laws about <laughs> You have been ignoring uh, your food news and choose university courses and saying you got this moonlighting job as a mm. chef somewhere. Well, okay. I hear. I've heard that one before. But I want to give you a bit of a lesson here in the local food movement. Because okay. that's what we're all about here today. Is that's a, right. A, a Kentucky Proud and all that kind of stuff. Well, you have a continuum. Well, this is me. Call this Susie. Susie's out of control, scared to death. She doesn't know what to do, okay? She's because on the yeah. she's between the extremes. One, I, uh, the person who comes into a restaurant and says, I want to know the GPS coordinates for the cow that produced this hamburger, <laughs> okay? All the way to the end where my father at 89 stood in front of an organic milk counter uh -huh. and said, I'm not paying that for organic milk. Right. Take me to my regular store. In between, you've got this growing interest mm -hmm. that's going to settle in right in here. You can tell I'm a wonk. Sure. And Susie is going to get educated. That's what Food News and Choose is all about. It's right. about good eating, but also uh, fresh and, and local kinds of foods, and also couple that with eating well and, and enjoying it, right? So that's where Susie is. Now, so, I like the way you set this up. So this is all about, let's see, let's talk about the food movement in general. And it doesn't have to be local, but just talk about, okay, the, the proliferation right. of food in America and why people are paying attention, mm -hmm. right? And it comes back on several key factors because we found out we've had cheap food for a long time. And now that we know some of the outcomes, the problems that that has caused, uh, it relates to a lot of aspects of our lives, which are? Oh, yeah, we've got all kinds of things. We've got uh, food safety. Right. Uh, we've got environmental stewardship. Mm -hmm. We have job creation in a local economy. If sure. we can get producers to talk to consumers. Health and uh, wellness. Health and wellness is a huge one because right. of linkages. So let's kind of, and, and food access. Right. So let's start with health and wellness and just quickly, uh, you know, we're dealing with linkages to disease. Yeah, so, you know, uh, unintentionally, I think our food system for the longest time was trying to make cheap food. And processed foods that have been, you know, that have a lot of fats and sugars added have created some very, very problems, very big health problems in America. That's right. Um, so now we're seeing that, okay, wait a minute, it's our diet yeah. that have contributed to all these factors. We can do something about that. Yeah, okay. Food safety. Food safety. We know about tainted food. I mean, you know, if the, the stories are legend out there. It's about, you know, getting bad food. Mm -hmm. at, the, at least at the local level, you know you can go to that farmer and you can find out if your cantaloupe went bad or something. Yep. You know, you can yeah. go up to somebody's door. And that's started happening, say, in the 70s, when we started getting the food safety mm -hmm. issues with, say, E. coli or yeah. outbreaks, where, yeah, there's 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 issues, and it hits the news, the media. Hey, how about access? Access is a huge thing. I mean, not everybody has access to fresh foods. Now, we do see a lot of farmers' markets popping up as a retort to that, mm -hmm. because people want fresh local food, want to get to know their farmers, have those conversations. Community. Com yeah. yeah, community. Yeah. That's one that I think is one of the, the good um, things that kind of come out of this that's issue, right? right? Environmental, environmental, that's easy to say, awareness, because we waste like 40% of our food. Yeah, and on the other sense, producing it is such an environmental tax. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have these large right. systems of, and one, all of that. one animal 
that it just really wreaks havoc on the environment. The waste that's produced and the predators for that one species, it's a big issue for the environment. Oh, absolutely. And then job creation. Uh, we, if we can get people motivated, as they should be, to bring the producers together with the uh, consumers, mm -hmm. then Susie is taken care of. And, and so anyway, our moment has arrived, and that's sure. what we need to do, and that's what we're going to deal with here today. Right. right? So, yeah, and, and all these factors come together, and you can see it in a centralized location when you talk about a food show, a regional food show, because that's these are what, popping yeah. up all over the nation. And usually it's a day or and three days long, one. Yeah. and everybody comes to one central place and checks out all the stuff that's happening in the food scene. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, well, it could be jams and jellies and local producers. and all kinds of things. All the artists and crafts here. that are happening. <laughs> and Bridget Nguyen is going to join us in our next segment. Yeah. We're going to go talk to her and make something, aren't we? You know, she's been the MC for our regional food show for quite a while, but she's also part of the food movement as well. She's a chef, uh, and she's done a lot of food shows across the nation and been involved with food across the nation as a media person. So she's an expert. We can't wait to talk to her and see what's going on with the uh, incredible food show, but also just talk about food shows in general and see why people Sorry. are coming back to the way things were when it comes I to food. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Let's go have an adventure. I'm ready. And you got a, a B plus, by the way. Thank you. Just start showing up for class. <laughs> right. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> you. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, okay, so I have I tickets. I actually like your gear. It looks good. I know, and you know what? I'm going to get all my family members <laughs> into the incredible food show, but guess what? what? We have landed in Allison Davis's Wild Times yes. Cooking School. She's a rock star. It's kind of home base for us. Right? I know. I love it. I absolutely love it, but we have another rock star with us That's today, right. and that's not you. I know. <laughs> There's well, plenty of room for My good friend and also colleague, Bridget Diggins, is here, yeah. and she's yes. going to be doing the incredible food show MC again for the sixth time. Right. I love it, yes. This event is something I adore. It yeah. is on my calendar as soon as the date is set for the following year. <laughs> and it shows no signs of slowing. There's just momentum. It's growing all the time, well, and it's just the best day. Well, I understand that, I mean, attendance is way, it's doubled. Huge. I guess the ticket sales doubled. Yeah. So, yeah. 6,000 I mean, uh, expected, and it And growing. Doubled. You know, I've never had a good hold. It just yeah. feels like a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I love that. Yeah. Right. And I think just every single year continues to grow. People are talking about it. It's covered in so many different media outlets, and right. then and anytime we have a headliner and um, this food big. and samples and boy you got to come hungry don't you oh my favorite thing vendors? Sylvia yeah. to say is that there truly is something for everybody yeah. I mean if you like to eat there's something for you here and that's yeah, all like of that. us but then if you love to cook if you want food education if you want some hands-on interaction there really is something for everybody that's what makes this one really interesting for me because I get to do a lot of food shows just as you do in yep. other places but here in Kentucky it's all about Kentucky proud and you know you go to food shows and there isn't any food you know, you get to see Isn't the, that the irony of it. Like, there's some mm -hmm. small samples, but yep. the, the you know the incredible food show actually has a, a vendor set up to where you can eat, sample, and also buy oh, food. So I feel like that's every, all I do yeah. is eat the whole time. Right, there. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you don't look like it. <laughs> I do. Anyway, <laughs> I do. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on because there are cooking school events there and vendors. Oh, and I mean, all there are just a You're gazillion the different things. By the way, yes, I'm so oh, proud yeah. to be. I love doing I it. I love, love to that. promote the incredible food show. And like every year, we are still going to have the big marketplace with over 100 different vendors. So that's really special to me because right. I know people love going to, for example, the farmer's market mm -hmm. because they get to talk to the farmers who are growing their food. Well, here you get to talk to the people who are producing some of your favorite packaged items. You can talk to them about how they designed their businesses, mm -hmm. how do they started and really develop those products. And that, I think, is really cool. This is kind of a food show on steroids because it's kind of taken the concept, which is not you know something that actually is happening across the country, but it's really taking it to a new level mm -hmm. oh, and absolutely. I think that that is a really valuable thing because it does have kind of from well, we A to talk Z about this whole food movement thing right? yeah and, and we just finished with that with right. our food news segment yeah. and, and how people are kind of getting back to what the you know what food mm -hmm. is because we, we've had a, a weird food system and now people want to get to know their farmer totally. know their food know the yep. products where they come from and and get a taste yeah. of it you know? and, and, we, and we should mention that Bridget also has a television show I do I do kitchen. I have the luxury of hosting the Kentucky Proud Kitchen yeah. and the two concepts really work well together in fact I discover a lot of new Kentucky right, Pride products say, yeah. every year through the food show. Sure. So it's pretty brilliant that um, we it's both get to cover. It's the all the new vendors, yeah. yeah well, Absolutely. Bridget actually has asked me to come cook on the show with Come her. on, Sylvia, I'm um, ready for you. <laughs> the, as long as the fire department's there, I don't have any time for this. So you guys <laughs> need to sign some waivers. Too. We <laughs> haven't set up the sprinkler system yeah, yet. Let's but invite him to come, you know. <laughs> actually, we are going to do uh, some tips there, you and I. Somewhere. We are. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Yeah, it's something to well, do with milling. Break, these breakout quick tips booths. Which is a wonderful concept. So 
Oh, truly, there's just so much information and so many different ways to get it, whether it's through a seminar, there's a seminar room, that's a really nice intimate setting for really getting mm -hmm. to have a discussion. Then there's the Quick Tips, quick tips booth, which right. I know you're participating in, and that's also very personal because um, yeah. everyone can just stand right where you are demonstrating, ask you questions. It's so tell me, such Jim, a non-intimidating environment. Yeah, people come up and they can really interact with your quick tips. Now this year, it seems like the, the food show has a, a heritage theme, a Kentucky heritage feel to it, as in, you know, ground up kind of ingredients. So we're going to do some milling. And what I mean by that, Sylvia, is... Do we have to, know, like, like uh, and I Love Lucy, where we'll have to walk around the stop? You know, like, <laughs> corn kernels or something. Basically, yeah. I mean, we're going to do oh, a little more high tech than that. But we're going you know, to take wheat and make flour. We're going to take corn and make grits. We're, you know, and, cool. It's going to be neat. You know, we're going to use I can't some, some fun little tools to, uh, to some tricks. But all, all my cooking techniques to... Yeah. To Actually, we're, we're going to work very hard not to cook at all. <laughs> I love that. But super interactive. So in addition to Quick Tips booth, you'll also be in the Heritage Kitchen, which is new this year. Mm. And that, again, is focusing on yeah. some of these Kentucky traditions. So what are you doing for that one, Jeremy? I well, know... There's a great author, Steve Coombs. He just... He, He's actually, a, you know, man of many hats, uh, but he's written like a new yourself. book about country ham, and we're gonna do some history on country hams and also wow. some cooking techniques. And he's, you know, an ex-chef too. He's he's paid his dues in the kitchen. Once uh, he knows his way around, so I can't wait to, you know, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna just kind of batter back and forth and yep. you know, talk country hams. Hey, there are pioneer women out there, and yes. there are pioneer men, but we have a pioneer woman coming. This and is, who is this so exciting. <laughs> Read your face. Yeah. Pioneer woman is coming. She will be our headliner, and I think so many people here in Kentucky and everyone really nationally relate to her in some mm. way. I think it's because most women kind of want to be her um, but she really has given this new voice and freshness to home comfort cooking she's very unapologetic about using butter or maybe convenience items and that's something that we want to know more about she feeds her family she works hard she homeschools her kids and she's just something um, just this phenomenon that's just well, so much bigger than we ever anticipated it's sort of the balance of, of all this stuff you know because the whole food movement is so exciting mm -hmm. and it's about good wholesome fresh local food but it's also about enjoying food isn't it? Exactly. And if you see those people, which we have, just milling around, you have a cookbook signing corner Love and that. all of those things, and people well, are really engaging. Like the incredible food show bring America back into what food should be about. You know, if there was this long, dark gap for many, many generations where food was not important. Yeah. It was all about cheap, it's quick. And now, trip. you know, things like this, you see this, the, the masses of people coming out and studying exactly, okay, what is real food? You know, how does it grow? And how is it made? What does it taste like? Totally. And how can I get my hands on it? How can I learn how to cook it? And this is what this is all about. It and, really starts a conversation. Yeah. And so so I think that's what's so important about food. You know, having done these um, and been involved with these, we have our little place where we, you know, we go around and interview people. But how do you MC such a thing? I mean, oh, it is be, fun. What is fun is how much duplicated? space. <laughs> yes, there will be two of me that day. I wish there were two of me that day because we always say, I think as chefs and as just food lovers, we wish we could sit in on every single mm. seminar, every quick tip, every single heritage presentation. We want to be there and talk to every single vendor. We want to be there bright and early for First 300 people through the door get free breakfast, and it's a Kentucky Proud breakfast cooked by all the Sullivan oh, students yes. and staff. Oh, and yes. so I truly think it's one of those things where you feel like um, you want to be in more than one place at one time. There's yeah. just so much going on. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how you, uh, your food history, and, and, and uh, tell us about your own well, kind of I, journey. Well, I, Sylvia, just love food and grew up around food and kind of took a little bit of a diversion and got distracted as a financial statement auditor, which was a very strange career uh. choice. But then once I moved to Kentucky, <laughs> I followed my real love which was food and was cooking in restaurants but then also came to be involved in a little bit more food media so I get to do great things like host Kentucky Proud Kitchen uh, and, and be involved in the food All right, show. I'm going to tell you right now I'm not mm -hmm. cooking with her because I bet she's being a financial advisor you have to have the exact ingredients. But see we are going to be cooking. Four <laughs> ounces. Oh, no, yes, so we are. <laughs> you no know, more. When you not five. Gig, but, uh, cooking is involved. We are going to cook. So you have to have exact ingredients? Oh yeah. no. Right, we don't follow recipes that, that closely oh, but you can, you can just oh, wait. That's more. my problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only when you're baking do you really have to measure, Sylvia. It'll be okay. <laughs> right. All right, then. Well, uh, we have uh, an incredible food show, which mm. is incredible. Yep, yeah. 9 to 5, so it's a full day. And again, get there early if you want to get free breakfast. Right. And stay all day. There is literally going to be so much food to eat all day. Some of my favorite food vendors um, and even some of my favorite restaurants will all be there. So it's mm -hmm. great.
great is that all these little favorite people around town mm -hmm. are all in one oh, place on the same day. So you, much to taste. And yeah. You can oh, oh, taste come food hungry. Uh, so much incredible food show. And about. there are actually you know, samples, and then there's also like a restaurant row thing kind of yeah. thing. There will be some restaurant stands some, there yeah. where you can okay. purchase some food. Yeah. Uh, $20. Tickets. Yes. Yes, and there's always a $3 off coupon online, but yes, oh, $20 a ticket, and that gets you into everything. So you get to see the Pioneer Woman, you get to eat, you get to go to as many seminars, quick tips as you want, bring your notebook. I Come mean, there is a mill. lot to know. <laughs> watch <laughs> Jeremy and I mill yeah, around. Milling, around. <laughs> okay. milling, country hamming. Country hamming, milling. Hey, you know what? I got a great idea. What? Let's go cook something. Let's okay. make something. <laughs> all right, and here I'll be there, and uh, I don't know what, I'll be milling. <laughs> Hey, we're going to make something special, and I'm between these two genius cooks. <laughs> what a compliment. And I'm the Vanna White of and cooking salads. Oh, it's definitely going to be putting you to work, too. And so, here I go. So and Jeremy, go go for it while I'm showing you. off these vegetables. Can you, tell, can you tell from the ingredients what we're going to make? Whatever could okay. be. Oh, we're going to make some, yeah, these. We're going to use these. <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> we're making nachos. We're right? making nachos. I had ulterior <laughs> motives. I love nachos. all the ingredients you could basically get from the Incredible Food Show. Absolutely, yep. Uh, Kentucky Proud nachos. Kentucky Who would have thought? With the exception of one, uh, because, well, actually, you might be able to find this there. You know, so go and find out. It's a surprise. But we're going to make house-made chorizo. Awesome. And, you know, chorizo is pretty popular nowadays. So, is, you know, all the Mexican cuisine. That um, would be sausage, right? Yeah, this is going to be a homemade. <laughs> sauces. Now typically I'll go to the grocery and just get some, some ground pork or you go to the farmer's market and get some, some ground pork from your local farmer. Uh, at the restaurant we just take about a pound of pork shoulder for about a quarter pound of fat back and we can run it through a grinder. So if you have one of those at home I suggest doing it. The results are that much better. A pound of shoulder, quarter pound, quarter of, fat pound of fat back. Nice. Yep. Okay. So it's a good ratio. It's that 80-20 you know, or 80-25 really is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. People can get well, that at their local Yeah you can store. buy that but you know go to the farmer's market and get a package of ground okay. pork their yeah. ratio is going to be right on. That's the way to go. Um, so a few rules when I do a, a sausage like this is I like to toast the spices. So mm. for chorizo, I get a pan nice and it's pretty pretty toasty already. And it's dry. There's nothing in there. I'm going to add uh, about a tablespoon of chili powder. Excellent. And then a uh, Oh man, I can okay. smell it right it's away. Okay. Yep. Cayenne. Uh -huh. Black pepper, about a tablespoon. We might get a sneeze there. And then You're about killing a me, tablespoon <laughs> of cumin. And we're gonna mm, just kind of roll man, this around. Good. good already, right? Yeah. With a uh, wooden spoon. And you do it dry. Spoon. Yeah, do it dry. And see those whiffs of smoke that are already kind of smelling great? Oh, it That's does smell That's what you want. Great. You don't really want to brown it or blacken it, but a good 20, 30 seconds in here okay. is all it takes, and it makes it just a really pungent. Oh, it smells so good already. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm -hmm. yeah. So well, the spices go into the ground pork. I am a chorizo lover, Jeremy, and I have to say, I have not made my own chorizo. Well, so, confession, yeah, now I am learning. The way you taste this will be the only way you go from now, and it's so easy, too. So, those spices are in the the, the, uh, the, the pork. Now, to this, um, I'm going to use a chipotle adobo. Now, if you guys open those cans of chipotle, yeah. it's that sauce that's in there. That's mm -hmm. what you really want, is that, that sauce, which is typically tomato and paprika and cinnamon and lots of oregano and onion. Can you find this in a grocery store already done, or do you do, yes, do that? Yes, you can. You uh, can Okay. find this. If you buy a can of chipotle peppers, you're going to find this sauce or this stuff around mm -hmm. the pepper. That's what those peppers and are don't swimming really in. Use it. You oh, use it's so good. Part of the sauce, but I want the sauce, right? So okay. a good tablespoon of that. Um, a good maybe quarter cup of sherry vinegar. Ooh, I wouldn't have thought vinegar goes uh -huh. in chorizo. And it usually it's an doesn't amazing unless thing. you're talking I've about even the Mexican this. versions. The, the yeah. South American versions usually have a vinegar, whereas the, the, the Spanish versions or Portuguese yep. are dry cured and they don't mm -hmm. have the liquid. So um, a good fra a one jalapeno seeded and minced goes in there as well. Mm. This is going to be the freshest, oh, greenest yeah. chorizo. Right. I mean, um, the ones I've purchased have never had anything green like that in them. Yeah. Well, see, that's what I like about the contrast, the dry spices and dried herbs yep. versus fresh. All the fresh um, ingredients. So a good, um, I'd say half cup of cilantro mm -hmm. in there, too. So all we have to do now is mix it up really well. And it's going to look familiar, kind of like the, the normal chorizo you're yeah. used to in the store. Except yeah. for it has now, nice chorizo, you said, is spicy, obviously. It's mm -hmm. got a lot of cayenne, oh, all I that forgot. kind of stuff. I forgot. We have to add salt, and, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Good tablespoon. And, and uh, there's a lot of other versions of sausage. And you can buy some of this actually already done in the 
You can yeah, absolutely buy this. Mm -hmm. Probably even at farmers markets. You know, but people have already done some of this. I encourage you to take this recipe that's flashing up on the screen, <laughs> or at foodisandchews.com, mm -hmm. and try this out once. You're not going to be disappointed. So yes. into the skillet. Yeah. Crumb it up a little bit. Crumble it up. Minimal oil because there's plenty of fat already in, in that the pork. pork. That's why we love pork. It's the best right. meat, oh, I think. Yeah. I love it. So Bacon, that's, yes. That's going to sizzle away. I'm going to sit here and stir Listen it and play with it. Awesome. While Bridget gets her ingredients. Right. Yes. So nachos is all about assembly. It's so easy. There's nothing crazy happening here. But we do have Kentucky Proud tortilla chips, which is very exciting. There is a lovely woman growing heirloom white corn and then turning it into chips. This so we've got these stuff. really nice, crunchy, salty chips. Oh, nice. And this is how I always do nachos at home. Nachos at and our sort house. Of spread out. Yes. Yeah. You know no what? Fancy. Single layer. Nachos in our house are never a snack. They're always a meal. So it's one of those things where we really do kind of clean out the refrigerator, um, empty out the vegetable yeah. crisper. So we'll do a ton of veggies, but I just want to start with plenty oh, of cheese. And this is, again, a local cheese. We've got mm. so many good Kentucky cheeses. And this one, is it spicy, Sylvia? Oh, yeah. It's a habanero white cheddar. So I think this is <laughs> perfectly appropriate for nachos. Oh, but we just have so much. That. Yes. Oh, wow. That is you great. can get this at the Incredible Food Show. Just a lot of creativity happening with a lot of our food crafters. I know. Maybe I'll take it easy <laughs> on the pepper side. So then I just shoot these into an oven, 375 degrees. You just want to warm the chips mm -hmm. and melt the cheese a oh, little bit. Oh, sounds great. Sounds good. Hey, we ought to mention, Jeremy, yep. that at the Incredible Food Show, not only can you get food and samples, but you can actually get stuff to do it with. Like these. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's plenty, yeah. plenty of craftsmanship there. Um, and yeah, you can find one of the like a homemade kitchen spoon. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And Doesn't also like uh, the cast iron skillets when we mm -hmm. get done with our milling. Oh, you know, we're oh yes, go over, over to the cast iron we skillet can just man. Our cornbread and a cast iron skillet. Totally. You know what you're supposed to do? And that is so what you're supposed My to dad do. Always with said. some pork product. You need some bacon grease down at the bottom of that cast iron oh, skillet. Wow. <laughs> but yes, and there's also uh, cutting boards and. It really is a great place to buy gifts. I get a ton of my oh, holiday yeah, gift yeah, giving sure. um, and get a lot of Christmas presents, stocking stuffers, all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, because you know, like you can get all this great food, but I guess you need stuff to do it with. Exactly. This exactly. Is really good idea. I mean, not, you know, okay, trying a cooking local, cooking Kentucky proud, and this is like a smorgasbord of really good Kentucky ingredients all in one day. Oh, that's and so fresh good. things, hot, prepared items. Kentucky, right? I just love nachos. Again, I had ulterior motives. I just wanted to make the nachos. Now, uh, Bridget, when you do all of this, do you put all of these things in there? Yeah. Like, so you uh, could throw these Sylvia on just raw. Meat. We, we have could do some, like anything, couldn't you? We have fresh corn. Corn, and we've got tiny, tomato. tiny tomatoes that we'll put on raw. And then I've just got a little bit of red onion going along with, um, I'll cut some of the corn off the cob and then also these really and nice is, yeah. hot banana peppers. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. So eat those just, just a little bit of everything. But you could also treat this kind of like a taco salad. And if uh -huh. you wanted to, put some lettuce on there, um, black beans. I was you know, super versatile. Really coming to our own, you know. It's like you uh, at one time people didn't do nachos uh, on a regular basis, and now it's kind of become mainstream, See, sort of like. So nachos. So we have to have beer, right? Yes, I nachos mean, and beer are like a match made in heaven. Right. So there is going to be like a craft beer section. I there think. is. There's a craft beer section. Also, the wineries will be there oh, yeah. pouring wine. And what's really cool is within that craft beer and wine section, there are also going to be little seminars. And I know a lot of people, just like you said, Jeremy, mm -hmm. we're learning more about our food, but we also want to learn more about our drink. Yep. And I think that's happening uh, there and as how well. How those kind of things come together? Totally. Too, uh, would be great. Uh, and people will be carrying big bags full of this stuff. Oh, yummers. So super simple, nothing fancy here. You know, because the smells of these things are just wonderful. You guys, you gotta check this stuff How's out. How's it going? That looks so good, and it cooks so quickly. Yeah, it's it's prime time. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, that's serious stuff. Oh, wow, I can't wait to see all this combined. So really, nothing too crazy happening. And again, these are, you know, these fun little tips you just pick up about using local items and making your own chorizo. Um, you know, fresh salsas. We've got a really nice fresh salsa here, but there are tons of salsa vendors, hot sauce vendors, oh, a lot of things that you can incorporate. I mean, yeah, that's a big thing, you know. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And all that. Okay. Oh, how'd you do? Give it a check. I get some. Right. Yeah. Our quality control, I love it. Should I grab the chips out of the oven? 
I think it's time. Well, that is good. That is good. I'm loving these spices. Uh huh. We have oh, meltiness. Wow. Really doesn't take much. Richard, we just I'm want so to warm the chips to see a little. How you do this though? Do you put the? It's a free for all. Ooh, thank you. It is not for the weary either. Oh, no. see? And this is what I love is that we didn't have to season everything because that has so much flavor. Mm -hmm. And so every element will have so okay, much, so but now, I think the chorizo is going to carry the weight. All right, now what? You want to go meat on next? Yeah, meat all on right. next. Not going to be shy about this either. Beautiful. Oh. It is spicy and so well seasoned. Yeah, nice. I urge you guys to try the Perfect. recipe at home. Woo! Oh, that looks so good. And then I love to put it on a tray like this because then we just stand around the kitchen and then you could crack open a couple beers and then you just eat right off of the tray. I love it. So then hey. veggies go on. Mm -hmm. There'll be people at the Incredible Food Show be going Yummy. behind the curtains. Yummy. Don't threaten me with a good time. Jeremy, do you want to hit this with a little bit yeah, of totally do that. this fresh salsa? So this is an uncooked salsa, nice and fresh. You could like throw it. some tomatoes on there. Oh, yeah, and then some of those little cherry tomatoes. And then Sweet. the other thing. Is sour cream, which I always just tuck this into oh, a little baggie. Oh, you're killing me. Da, 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 that da. is perfect. There we go. Even distribution, <laughs> globs and globs. Maybe cut the hole a little bit smaller, but it's Man, fine. These are funky. Oh, this makes me wish I could cook. But you can. <laughs> this was you all about actually, assembly. Is yeah. It is easy, and it's a crowd pleaser. Everybody loves this. Yeah. Big time. Throw on some fresh tomatoes. You could put cilantro. Football season, whatever. More red onion. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh, I mean, you can't it. go wrong. Really, yeah. chips and cheese. The extras yeah. are just an added bonus. Okay, when's the taste testing? No. Run out. Ah. Okay. Ooh, I want grab? one. Bridge. Uh, Bridget. Hop in. Get in there, oh, honey. you go ahead. <laughs> you all go no ahead. Fair. <laughs> all right, Sylvia. Cheers. Oh. Then wait for me. <laughs> it's just so hard to get one loaded with everything. Mm. What's the verdict? This is delicious. I know I missed all the vegetables. I gotta get some of those. These are mm. spoon and fork nachos. All right, so anyway, that's what well, you get. Through. To get more information about the Incredible Food Show, go to foodnewsandchews.com. And come and join us in. We would love to see you there. I love that day. I'm saying heirloom corn. Just takes you back in time. Mm -hmm. you know, so you haven't tasted a corn chip or corn or grits or anything unless you've used that. Mm, those, that those pepper is so They're good. heritage nachos, heritage. Jeremy. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm diving in. You guys are. All right. We'll see. Gonna We're going to eat next time. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you at the food All show. Right. See you at the food show. Food News and Chews is brought to you by these proud sponsors. Alltech, helping farmers feed the world. Azure Restaurant and Patio, worldly influenced, locally inspired. Sullivan University, offering higher education for people with higher goals. Azure Catering, catering the most important events, yours. Critchfield Meats, fresh, high quality, all natural meats, guaranteed. If you would like a DVD copy of this episode of Food News and Chews, visit foodnewsandchews.com or email us at info at foodnewsandchews.com.